Contraptions creates greatest tool. Everything you see behind me and more is considered a contraption in Create Mod. Those are the moving machines, whether they're rotating or training or minecarts or anything of the sorts. That is a contraption. That is what we're talking about. Contraptions are the guys that are going to be making your tree farms, your crop farms, your auto drills, and a bunch of other things. So if any of that interests you, this video is for you. I'm not just going to teach you how to build those things, but I'm going to teach you how a contraption works and what you can do with them to empower you to build any contraption at any time. So make sure to like the video and we'll get right into it. A contraption is a moving machine, right? Something that spins in a circle or moves along a track or goes up and down. It's a machine that functions by moving. And as you can see, there are tons of ways to make them. There are the three different bearings, your windmill bearing, your mechanical bearing, and your clockwork bearing. There is a gantry system. There are the two mechanical pistons, sticky or otherwise. There are the two pulleys, a rope pulley or an elevator pulley. There is the ever popular minecart and trains actually count as moving contraptions. That being said, we're not gonna be covering trains in this video. Trains themselves warrant their own video, so we'll be tackling that at a different time. First thing you should note about contraption blocks is each of them has a sticky side or at least a side that attaches to something, right? All of them face in a direction, all of them have some attachment with the hose pulley or the rope pulley. You have to pull it up, but you can see that right there is its sticky side. So each of these has a place where objects need to be placed on top of it. They're directional. However, just placing a block on top of it isn't enough because we probably want to, you know, have more blocks on top of it than that and have them stuck together. So that is where you're going to want super glue. Super glue is going to glue blocks together and when they move, they become one unified contraption. And all you have to do, you just drag select with it, right? So right click your first point, right click your second point. And when you do that, you can glue things together. There's pretty much no limit to how much you can glue together. There's a limit to one single glue, right? Like if, if I take this, you could see eventually it'll tell me selected area is too big. However, I could just glue two smaller areas together to glue that area. And if you're ever not a fan of the glue, you just look at your glue section and punch it with a glue bottle. You can't actually break items while holding the glue bottle, not even in creative mode, or the, the super glue item. So holding it out will show you glue. And it's not enough to just break the blocks, right? If I break these blocks, the super glue remains. So any blocks that are placed in there will be glued again. If you don't want to use a bunch of glue, then I would use linear chassis. These guys are super, super useful. You can see they have a connected texture, but that's not just a decorative thing. Linear chassis will connect to other linear chassis that are facing in the same direction as it and is the same linear chassis. So all of this structure is connected. However, if I do that, oh, got to hold shift. There we go. That is not connected because it's facing in a different direction. That is not connected because it's facing in a different direction. And if I take the secondary linear chassis, it connects to itself, but not to a first linear chassis, which is a regular linear chassis. So this could be pretty good if you want to separate out parts of a machine. Uh, but for a lot of general use cases, just linear chassis are really, 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 really helpful. Now I could sit here and lecture you about how each and every one of those blocks work, but that would sound something like this. The mechanical bearing is an anchor for a contraption, an anchor being the source block, and it's got a lot of different uses. And yeah, that's, that's pretty boring, so we're not going to do that. Instead, we are going to build contraptions together, you and I, as one. And as I go through the building process, I am going to talk aloud my thought process, the whys, the hows, the whats, and you are going to learn through doing rather than hearing. Take that, American school system. The first contraption we're jumping into is the ever-popular tree farm. The key to designing any farm and understanding what it does is knowing its pieces. Create is a puzzle, and it's all about the small details, not the full contraption. So let's break this thing down. We're going to need some way to place down saplings. And when those saplings grow into trees, we'll need to cut those trees down store those items and move them to somewhere more useful. Those are the pieces of this contraption. And of course, contraptions can do all of those. 
Deployers work on contraptions and will be able to place down our saplings. Saws can cut entire trees down, even the leaves. So not only will we get all of our wood, but we'll get all of our saplings. And chests, when attached to a contraption, will suck up any items processed by the contraption. So immediately, that's actually item storage. To move it to somewhere more useful, we can use a portable storage interface. So this tree farm is going to teach you how to use four contraption machines already. Next up is deciding which anchor to use, and I'm going to be honest, any of them would work for this. However, we're going to stick with the most popular option, the mechanical bearing. It's the most simple. There are a few reasons why we're going to be using the mechanical bearing instead of anything else. First and foremost, mechanical bearings are magical and can phase through blocks in their way. So trees will not block this machine where they would block many others like pistons as well as a gantry carriage. Also, this is a machine that we only need to work in one direction. A saw faces one direction only. And since this spins in one direction only, the saws will work in this circular formation, allowing it to loop forever and ever and ever. Now, you could just as easily use a gantry carriage, but you'd have to take some additional precautions like saws on both sides of the carriage, and it requires a little bit of redstone, and I don't want to get into too much redstone today. Now, a gantry carriage is a popular secondary choice, but it requires a little bit of redstone, and I don't want to get into that. For all mechanical bearings, they will receive power from their underside. That's very important. You want to make sure the guy is actually powered. Next thing we're going to talk about is this movement mode, right? When we click and hold, we can see the default movement mode is place when stopped. That means that when the machine is stopped, whatever is on top of it, that wasn't the right block, whatever is on top of it will stop moving and will be placed in the nearest grid space like so. The next setting is only placed near initial angle. If you do that, it will only place it in some manner that is similar to how it began. So if it's not at the starting angle, it will not place. However, if we come to where it began right here, you'll see it will place. And then finally, we have only place when the anchor is destroyed. So no matter what, the machine will never place unless we break the mechanical bearing. Now for this farm, it actually isn't important what movement mode we have, but it can be important for others. I'm going to be using linear chassis to build the structure of this farm, but remember you could use any block glue together. The first thing we want to note is the direction of rotation, and we know it rotates in this direction. So our saws here, who need to be facing towards the trees, are going to be placed like so. And remember, always glue your stuff onto your contraptions. I promise you, you're going to forget every time. A byproduct of these machines fundamentally interacting with the world is we have to prepare the world for them. In this case, you need dirt. Saplings go on dirt, or anything that a sapling can be planted on. Now, I, being an expert in the crate mod, know the working area of this machine by heart. However, you probably don't. If you wanted to know, you could just as easily use deployers to place the dirt, or you could just follow this. For a contraption five blocks long, this is the circular working area, and you're probably thinking, Dijojo, Dijojo, why aren't there saws in the center? Well, with bearings, there's kind of a quirk of them where this whole area is effectively unaffected. Pretty much nothing will be interacted with in this area. Uh, I think one or two blocks might be able to in some cases, but ultimately it's usually just a waste of resources. All right, we've got our saws placed down. Why don't we get some storage onto this machine? And pretty simply, I want my storage to go here. I think that looks pretty stylish. Something you got to be careful of when you are gluing something onto a linear chassis in a way that, you know, it's not connected to this, you cannot glue it while looking at this face you'll just glue the face. You need to be looking at the non-connected thing, the, the one that doesn't get glued, because now we gotta go here and shift right click and take it off and it's this whole problem. But there we go, we have our chest. Next up, of course, we need to deploy, deploy, deploy. And that is going to require a little bit of height. Some of you may know you need a block space between where the deployer is and where it functions, right? So this isn't even enough, right? Because that's interacting with this dirt block here. We need two block spaces to properly place the sapling here. So that's the height we're looking at. So pretty simply, I am just going to build up this machine. Now I am going to be placing the deployers on the 
back of the machine. And that is because of the order I want this thing to operate, right? We want the saws to break the saplings and then the deployers to place the saplings. So this is kind of like ordering how the machine works. These will happen last because they'll pass by the block after the saws. To ensure our deployers are actually placing the block we want them to, we need to filter them. So take your sapling and use it in the filter slot of the deployers. And now the deployers will pull any saplings out of this chest and use them when they need. If you can't reach the filter slot uh, for any reason, you can twist them by giving them a flick with the wrench on the top to rotate them uh, around their little arm instead of like spinning them around like this. This is the core of the farm completed. It will break the trees, it will store the trees, and it will place them back down. The last thing we have to do is get the items moving into somewhere more useful. And for that, we are going to use a portable storage interface. And once again, just don't forget to glue them onto the contraption. Uh, you can't place them right onto chests. However, they do need to be facing outwards. So I'm going to use a fair few helper blocks. And you know what? We're just going to use the wrench because we can. Uh, portable storage interfaces, kind of like deployers, need a block space between the two of them. Uh, they won't work if they're right up to each other. However, there can be a block between them. That's not going to break anything. And like I said, we're going to make sure to glue it together. There we go. We're not done just yet. You can't just place a chest underneath these things. They're not hoppers. Speaking of, you can use hoppers or you can use chutes. You can use belts. I'm going to use a smart chute since it'll take out a stack at a time and go directly downwards into this chest. So the flow of items will be when the contraption swings by, these will connect and begin transferring items. Because this is pulling items out, it will pull items out of the contraption and place them into the chest. If you wanted, you could have something pushing items into this. So a chute on top with an inventory on top of that. You could push items into a moving contraption. But in this case, we want to pull them out. And there we go. That's all we had to do to make this farm operational. Chopping trees, storing items, placing blocks, filtered blocks, and transporting items out of a contraption. That is what this one embodies. And all we have to do to jumpstart it is place down at least one sapling. It'll grow, produce more. Or you can even uh, put into the chest a sapling. Now, I, I kind of have to uh, not do that because I opted to have the chest covered so I can't open it. So I'll just place down a few saplings here. Let's say it's kind of early game and, you know, we don't have much uh, luck with our saplings. And we are going to start the bearing. And as you can see, the deployers aren't placing anything because they have nothing to place. And the saws don't break the saplings. If I turn the random tick speed up briefly to 300 so we get a tree growth there we go you will see as the saws come around they will begin to chop the tree and once they break the last log bam and there we go now interestingly enough something that we should show off is that the deployers are having some trouble they don't seem to want to place down the saplings all right let's stop the contraption and do some troubleshooting i do wonder why 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 are we not placing down our saplings is it because the chest is obstructed this is actually not a problem i have yet to experience this is this is new i know everyone says this this never happened uh this is very new interesting i wonder if the chest does need to be uncovered for deployers to pull anything out of it. So I'm just going to put a stack of saplings on the inside of it. Hopefully I got everything glued together proper. Okay, yep, the chest has to be uncovered. Well, there you go. We're learning together. Don't cover up your chests. Deployers cannot access them. And uh, yeah, look at that. That is an infinite tree farm. That will run forever. You can see it as it comes by. It swings around, breaks the tree. And as long as there's space inside of the chest, it will pick things up, plant things again, and even drop off the extra saplings so it won't get bogged up. This sort of design is even better as a bamboo farm for, for early game because it doesn't require the deployers, which do need brass. If you just raise up the saws by one, the bamboo stem will, of course, never be broken, and the saws will just chop it down. So it's like half the farm and produces just as much wood, probably. I don't... I don't know the numbers on that exactly. All right. For our next machine, we are going to do something a little bit simpler. A paver. And for that, we're actually going to use this lovely set of land. 
let's assume that you want to flatten this out and get a nice look to it. Well, we can use these things, these mechanical rollers is what they're called. They'll break blocks that are right in front of them, uh, and we can even set a block to be placed underneath of them. This kind of machine is going to be perfect for a piston. I think it's pretty obvious why it's so good for the piston, but just in case, I'll let you guys know. It's because it only needs to move in one direction. Once it's paved and flattened the ground, it's all done. Now, you can see that I'm actually placing the piston arms in. Yes, these piston extension poles uh, extend the length of a piston. And when you're wearing goggles, it'll tell you how long you've got. So this is really cool because it's pretty much manual. You set how long you want this piston to go. Now, the way we get these guys to pave is by putting a material in the material slot, right? This left open slot. And uh, we'll say we want to use brass casing because brass casing is really pretty something super fun about them is connected ones will all be encased or will all have the same block right it'll all connect together which is super cool we do still need to glue these together of course of course but they all connect already by being next to each other as far as filtering goes and obviously we need to add storage to this machine so that we can feed it the blocks and just with the portable storage is we could have this pass by a portable storage and pick stuff up but this is a very temporary thing right and what's very cool about this is if you had the time and the food uh, you could honestly just use a hand crank with it uh, it doesn't use that much su and you can see there we go it's going to level out the floor, and it's going to pave the blocks beneath it. So this is a really good one for builders out there. And the mechanical roller, you know, it doesn't have terribly many uses uh, compared to this. But still, it's a really interesting use case, and especially with the piston as this one-way contraption. Still very cool. Oh, and just like our bearing, we can actually change around how we want the piston to work. And as always, it picks up all the blocks that it breaks. Super cool. All right, but you guys have had enough of simple, so let's check out the gantry carriage. So a gantry carriage actually requires two things. It requires itself as well as these gantry shafts, which are like a track that the carriage will move on. And keep in mind, a carriage can be placed in any of the directions, in, in all the directions even, and even upside down if I place this in the air. So they've got a lot of range of motion. Keen-eyed viewers have noticed a shaft in the gantry carriage which is weird because this is a contraption anchor so why would it need a shaft well it doesn't take rotational power the uh, this gantry shaft does right so by the way don't get confused this is a gantry shaft this is just a shaft input and output so if i say shaft it's this guy if i say gantry shaft it's this guy hopefully i ho hopefully i don't forget in any case the gantry carriage's power is that when the gantry shaft receives a redstone signal, the rotational force it receives will not go to moving the gantry, it will go to the shaft right here. So of course I am going to demonstrate that. You can see that unpowered, the gantry carriage moves along, but when we power the gantry shaft, you can see now the shaft is spinning super cool and of course it doesn't matter where the carriage is you can just power it it'll lock it to a block it'll place this down because obviously rotational force only works for place structures and then we'll go back the way to get the gantry carriage to move in the opposite direction is to make the speed of uh the rotational speed opposite and that is why these guys are a little more complicated because to get something that moves back and forth forever requires a little bit of redstone Another thing you need to keep in mind is that a gantry system uh, will be blocked by blocks in front of it. So if you have, you know, say say you made a tree farm with this, if a log grows in front of the blocks, watch this, it stops, can't move through. Crop farms are pretty simple. We just need some way to harvest and plant the crops, to store them, and move the items to somewhere more useful. However, since we're choosing to use the gantry carriage, we're also going to need some sort of flip-flop system to invert the rotational force of the gantry carriage. This is a pretty simple farm, though, because a mechanical harvester handles everything for crops. I know I placed it on this casing, but it can't be placed on anything but full blocks. It's one of those that has to be placed on a block. I'm going to place down my gantry shaft, and I'm actually going to build out that big old 4x4 farm that everyone knows and loves, uh, just as, you know, a template, right? And now this is where a gantry can really shine in comparison to a mechanical bearing, right? You can get something that covers this very, very large area as opposed to, you know, a rather circular uh, area required by the mechanical bearing. This can get like a nice cubic shape because with the gantry, you're really designing it to your own means. Uh, and I am going to extend the gantry shaft 
out by one or two on each side and you can actually use some of creates advanced placement you can see that arrow dictating which direction i'm going to be placing so i can just kind of extend it by uh, manipulating my camera it's really useful since the gantry carriage cannot run into any blocks we're going to be using it on its side which is kind of exciting and then we are going to use a linear chassis to build up a big old sweeping arm that's not going to run into anything but we can add our harvesters to and as you know, harvesters don't have to be glued on because they are intended to be attached to blocks. Now, since this is going to go back and forth, we can even line both sides, though it is not explicitly necessary. And of course, we are going to need storage, maybe two devil chests, you know, just in case we have a really good harvest. Now, one thing I'm going to do because I'm feeling a little bit lazy is actually remove this line of harvesters and replace them with mechanical plows and as you would expect a plow to do this will plow the soil it will it will till it for us which is extremely helpful we of course just have to make sure that we have ourselves a water source in the center of this make sure it's going to be four out from all of your crops I seem to have actually miscounted on that side but that's okay a little bit of artistry never hurt anyone uh and yeah this is about uh the reason i'm doing this shape here is because it's about the largest um size that a piece of water can extend to uh oh it does appear that water will break gantry shafts that's interesting that's all right though a slab on the bottom should stop the water from flowing out okay we will unfortunately have to replace the gantry shaft well, now we know to keep your gantry shafts dry, and it is plenty easy to replace. So there we go. No problem at all. Now, I took out my hoe and started hoeing, and that was an accident because, like I said, we are going to use rotational force. So we'll power this one side, and you can watch as the plows, there we go, slide over the dirt. Uh, interesting. Oh, tell you me, I, I, I simply built it bed. Yeah. Well, look at that. <laughs> what a tutorializer I am. Now, unfortunately, you will have to update the anchor again if something goes wrong like that. It won't be able to update on its own, but check this out. So the way the harvesters work is when they roll over a fully grown crop, they will harvest and replant it. The crop has to be fully grown, but otherwise, there's no consequence to using them. They're super efficient. Uh, yeah, they will always replant them as well. So you're never going to like lose a spot or anything. Now, a harvester won't plant something in an unplanted space. You would need a deployer for that. But we don't need deployers for this farm because these guys do the replanting. However, to make this thing fully automatic, like I said, we're going to need some way to detect when it reaches one side or the other and reverse the rotational flow. So we are going to need to get ourselves a gear shift, which is what allows us to reverse rotation, right? Um, that is going to be super important. We're going to need some way to power it. Now, I like to do it this way. Uh, with pistons facing into a redstone block. It's a sort of flippy floppy mechanism that I like. So one piston faces into the block here, whoop, like so, and then the other p piston faces that way. When this piston gets powered, it'll push the redstone block here, and when this piston gets powered, it'll push the redstone block off. There are two things we're going to be using to do this. That is going to be a redstone link and a redstone contact. This is actually a contraption device, and it's super duper cool. Make sure that you do have it glued onto your contraptions, of course. But when it is glued onto your contraptions, you are able to tell something to, or rather, you are able to interface with a redstone connection. So as you can see, this is connected to a contraption, and this is connected facing into it, and it emits a redstone signal. Now I'm going to be placing this redstone link here and we're going to set this to, we'll call it, we'll do just redstone on the top like that, right? Um, I'm not going to go into how to use redstone links. This is just kind of an overview of how, how you might set up a system like this. And all we have to do is kind of like make sure that we're sitting where we would need to be. So this redstone link will face into this redstone link when it reaches this side. And then this redstone link will put redstone on the bottom. Right now the power is off, so we know that once that becomes powered, we would like this to become powered, right? So we are going to listen for redstone top, and here we are going to listen for redstone bottom, and that should get this machine moving back and forth, right? It's only a one tick thing, just a quick thing, because it'll instantly move away, and then look at that. 
and the machine rolls over the crops. The harvesters that are inactive don't even move, so the game tells you if something's in the wrong direction. And then as this guy slowly makes his way over and touches here, goes the other way. There we go. And now to add our final touch is a portable storage interface. Now I did break the carrots by placing this down, so we'll have to do some replanting, but we all know how important a portable storage interface is. All right, great. And that is a crop farm with a gantry carriage. So we can let this guy uh, start moving again. And of course, if we turn up the speed, this machine will work much faster. And go back and forth, back and forth. And of course, if I were to turn up the random tick speed so our carrots grew much faster, we should see it harvesting and depositing. And you can see it attempts to deposit just before touching the redstone link. So you're never going to run into any issues with it. And there we go. Perfect. It should be right on the way and we should see carrots in our chest. Amazing. Now, I have no doubt that this system right here is not the best way to do one of these. So let me know in the comments if you know a better way to get your gantry carriage going back and forth. Okay, for our next machine, we're going to need a little bit more open space. And I am going to just mark out a chunk for us to work in. We only need to mark out one side of the chunk, as it were. But still, it's important to know. So for a chunk destroyer, we effectively need two things. We need an ability to break blocks, and we need an ability to break blocks downwards. Now, there is something called a drill, and the drill is quite amazing. The drill drills things. It breaks blocks. Not just stone, even though it's a drill. It breaks any block, really. And we can combine that with the rope pulley to go downwards right the rope pulley is another contraption anchor that when given rotational force will either push something downwards or pull something upwards the problem is we really kind of don't want to place down 256 drills i mean that's a ton of drills and it's kind of unfair to your iron supplies so instead we can actually utilize the gantry carriage's superpower by combining its ability to spit out a rotational force with its ability to move across a, a single line. So what we'll do is the gantry carriage will be used to move the rope pulley one by one. Then we'll power the gantry shaft and then the gantry carriage will power the rope pulley. And these blocks that we marked out are going to be our drills that we'll have facing into the ground. And they can go right along the chunk. Now, I did put the shaft on the wrong side of this, which is my bed. Uh, we want to make sure, of course, this is not moving in the same exact direction. So the shaft will start here and then come out this way. So the actual contraption is just going to be a bunch of drills and we can slap some item vaults on top. Any inventory works. Well, I say any inventory. Barrels, vaults, and chests work. Uh, other inventories may work, but none of them are going to be recognized as something that can be pulled from and they're not going to be put anything in. So just stick with the vanilla or the vaults. The rope pulley, although it doesn't look like it's sticky, is sticky, so we don't have to glue anything to the rope pulley. We do, however, need to make sure this is connected to this and we can of course do so with our linear chassis and to glue the other side of the linear chassis while without looking at it you can actually just glue it twice like so so now the underside there is glued uh, and if we were to hover over this uh, with a wrench and hold control you could see that uh, we got it and I'm just going to make sure it's set to one so that is glued to it so this when this moves it will drag this along and when this is powered it will push and pull this up and down now someone better at redstone than me could wire this up to be totally automatic in fact I'm sure there's great tutorials for it but I have no idea how to do that so we are just going to look at the way this works in the sort of poor man's sense we need our gear shift we need, of course, some sort of rotational force. And as it sweeps along, it is going to break the grass. And you can see these two contraptions are moving with each other. But keep in mind, this is a separate contraption than this. So we've used two contraptions to combine contraptions into something even greater. Now to control this thing, we're essentially just going to use two levers. This reverses the direction of movement and whether it pushes down or pulls upwards, and this causes the rotational force to travel through this shaft into the rope pulley. So for now, I'm just going to let it sweep all the way across. And actually here, I'm just going to do a little bit of cleanup, make sure we don't have a problem with water flowing all over our machine. Uh, water is not dangerous to this, but it can't move through blocks on top of it. So if we made a cobblestone generator, it would break. So if I power the shaft, we should now see 
this is spinning so this is spinning so now the system goes down isn't that cool and basically we could just wait until this hit bedrock once it hit bedrock pull it back up by reversing the direction like so this will pull this thing back up very nice unpower the shaft wait till it moves about a block power it again you can check yep that moved it one block and then you unpower this and it will begin digging the next one and of course if you have the speed on this thing set to 256 look how fast this thing goes just check it out like you will be a chunk perimeter in no time we've now looked at every single type of contraption except for the minecart and i have saved the best for last i'll be showing off two machines to you guys the first one is an automatic turret and the second one is an infinite miner now the automatic turret is a little bit silly i totally admit but it's extremely fun and actually highlights one of the most interesting things that works on contraptions and that is dispensers now check out this cart controller by the way this cart assembler it's got a sticky side on top and you can affix anything you want to this this is what is going to go on top of an actual minecart okay you're going to want to place a minecart inside of it with no redstone signal going into the cart controller okay and that's where you're going to be building that's what's going to place this down now for this there are three movement modes always face towards motion pause actors while rotating and lock rotation this one faces the top to wherever this is rotating this pauses anything on top of it while it's rotating but it still faces rotation and this one locks its rotation i'm going to set this to lock rotation a lot of times you're going to want to set it to lock rotation unless you want it specifically to like rotate around with it um dispensers and droppers work on contraptions and they work off of the speed that they're given uh, so, with the cart controller, once we power the cart controller, this will become a contraption, like so. And you can see it fired an arrow. If we give this a little shove, <laughs> you have your very own home defense system. Uh, a, a terrifically inaccurate one. If your enemy is kind of to the left of your house, you're, you've got him. Um, but this, this is way too fun, but does work um it's very interesting to see vanilla redstone items working on contraptions but it's a super cool thing for this next bit we're going to be hanging out in the caves and i'm not going to go through my design process as much because at this point we know what every single thing can do it's more so putting it together this is an infinite miner right and as i'm sure anyone could guess we're going to be using drills to carve out the blocks in front of us of course how do we make this infinite how do we make this go forever well we know we have to use a minecart contraption and what we can use is the mystical and amazing powered rails powered rails combined with redstone blocks and a clever combination of deployers is going to make this thing run forever we're going to be taking our deployers and placing them so that they face downwards in this kind of four by four and don't worry about those facing outwards we're going to use our wrench to make sure they are looking down this deployer will be placing uh, uh what are these called power rails and this one will be placing redstone blocks so you can already see what's happening here this deployer will continue the line right it will reach here and place down the rails this deployer will place down a power source so the rails stay powered because remember it's the movement of a contraption that gives it rotational force so the movement of the minecart gives us rotational force the faster the minecart moves the faster we drill now these two on the bottom you're going to give it something that it's going to be picking up a lot of so cobblestone if you're high enough deep slate if you're deep enough or even netherrack because this works in the nether and they're going to be making sure to fill in any holes so that you know everything works just perfectly fine obviously we're going to need our cart assembler and minecart inside of it and we're actually almost there to infinite space i'm just going to build up a little structure to connect this all so i've brought out the structure a little strangely here because i'm going to show you something really really cool the mechanical plow doesn't just till dirt it actually is also used to pick up non-full blocks like torches and rails. So now I think you guys are starting to see how this is infinite. What will happen is as this moves forward, the plow will be dragged along with it, breaking the rails, putting it into the storage system for the deployers to place down again. This drill will do the same thing to the redstone blocks. So it's essentially an infinite minecart track that you can follow if you want to be cute about it you could even pop a seat on there and uh, ride along with it 
Now don't glue the controller to this and do make sure it is in lock rotation mode, but this is like, this is so cheap and ridiculously easy for how extraordinarily powerful this thing is. I mean, I don't think I have to tell you guys how stupidly powerful a machine like this is. And this is it. There's no joke. All you have to do is put powered rails in. I would recommend putting in at least three powered rails and at least three redstone blocks or two redstone blocks, including the first one you need to place down to power this machine. So once it's down make sure to give the a little push to the minecart uh, it can be difficult to do in this configuration um so you may need to like power something behind it or even you know build it a little different i'm gonna just build this one a little different so it's easier for me to get in there okay sweet so now make sure of course you have your rails in there and you have your blocks of redstone Power your little minecart contraption and give the guy a push. And uh, I didn't glue it together right. Uh-oh. Okay, well, let's check out the power of this. I had a little mishap. And instead of freaking out and having to break things, if you shift right-click on it with a wrench, you pick up the contraption. Uh, yeah, you can pick up everything in a contraption. So, uh, like the world's greatest shulker box. You know, something like that. So... Let's just ensure that everything here is glued together nice and sticky. Good, good, good. Always make sure that you are in lock rotation mode. Okay, don't use your glue on that lock rotation. Uh, and make sure that all your items are there. And of course, they are going to be because this is so powerful. Uh, there we go. And now you can give it a little push and you can see it is absolutely off to the races. It can't run out of rails because it'll just keep breaking and placing them. It can't run out of redstone blocks because it'll keep breaking and placing them. And best of all, you put a seat on it so you can literally hitch a ride. It is so amazing. And this thing is immune to liquids. This thing is totally immune to liquids because it's using redstone blocks. So if I were to come here and place down some water, it's not going to flow in the way of anything. It's not going to hurt the minecart. It's not going to hurt the rails. It's not going to hurt the redstone blocks. Even lava. This thing will tunnel right through lava. I mean, just check that out. Look at that. No problem. Not, not even an ounce of a problem. Now, the minecart does a little wiggle, right? The minecart does a little wiggle. But, uh, I don't see any problems. Do you guys see any problems? I don't see any problems. This thing is so cool. Let's see if it can even tackle the infamous lava lakes. Let's see. Yep. It's looking like it's tackling it to me. I don't know about you guys, but this thing seems pretty freaking cool. Now, of course, if you're sitting on that seat, you are not going to tackle the lava lake. So, you know, be a little careful. There are ways you can build this so that, you know, uh, you are totally protected from lava, but it's way more expensive. It requires way more deployers. And uh, this is pretty cool. You don't have to sit on it. I, I'm in love with this design. Seriously, I'm in love with this design. Also note that fluid tanks and portable fluid interfaces obviously work on moving contraptions. It's just that they're kind of better suited for trains, so we didn't cover them here. Thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. It took a very long time to make. I hope it shows, and I hope it helped. I hope you have a much better understanding of contraptions and if you do, leave a comment. Subscribing is great, but commenting is everything to me. So like the video, comment what you liked about it, and uh, let's thank the members. I just want to use this time to say thank you so much to the members of this channel. They are helping this channel and me become closer and closer to becoming a full-time content creator. So if that's something you'd be interested in, subscribe and become a member.